What do you say we do some cabinet work? It's about time. Gosh, it took us forever to get to the cabinet. Oh, right now, I'm just going to take some Gojo. I finally found some Gojo cream. And I'm going to take that old Gojo. We're just going to wipe this whole cabinet down. And I, I probably remove the speaker cloth, too. Uh, I don't want to get any... Uh, anything on this speaker cloth it's a little it's got a couple of small holes in it and everything but not enough to cancel it out uh, for use uh, you know that's just a just a little bit tattered battle scar of a bygone era we all know that and you've heard me say that a million times it's only stapled on the rear I'll have to remove these uh, screws these four screws here and it's stapled on the rear we can restaple it you know I have a staple gun it'll work just fine so let's get let's get a little bit of this gojo on here. Right, now one of the thing about gojo, it doesn't have uh it doesn't have lanolin in it, which you know puts a coating on the wood. This, I'm just gonna you know just dip it on in there and just give her a good scrub down. That's all we're gonna do. And you, the, you can see that the cabinet's really in pretty good shape. There's no need for a refinishing on this at all. So I'm gonna give this thing a look look at the crap coming off of there. Look at that. You'll be amazed what this thing will look like after I get done with the Gojo. I learned about this, you know, many years ago on the antique radio forum. Some guy said, you know, I was getting ready to clean a cabinet. And I said, geez, you know, what's a good thing to clean a cabinet with? And some guy popped up there, you know, said, Gojo. And then, you know, 50,000 other guys popped in and said, yeah, yeah, I use Gojo all the time. I said, Gojo? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Well, it is. It gets rid of that old smoke and, and crap. Look at that. Look, look at the stuff coming off that cabinet. And it gets down and leaves the nice wood grain, okay? Just to take your time. There's no rush. You know, today's kind of a miserable, sultry day. We're going to have lots of rain. You'll probably hear some thunder in the background if you haven't already. Maybe a tornado or two. I'll just sit out here and watch the tornadoes go by while I clean the old cabinet here. The Reverend Martin Luther Banks Jr.'s cabinet and his wife's uh, wife, Maud. I'm sure she'd appreciate me doing that. She looked like a very fastidious and, and clean type of lady. But, you know, let's see what I can do. You can already see. Look, look, at the, look at the wood grain coming out of that thing. Isn't that nice? Yes, it is. We just started. Well, there it is on one side. I cannot believe the crud that came off of that. There's just years of grime and dirt and, you know, probably pipe smoke, soot in the air. I mean, all kinds of stuff, you know, cigar smoke and... You never know where, you know, because it, this radio, you know, according to Martin, he said he did not know where his grandfather got it at because he never made much money. He really couldn't afford to have a radio like this. Well, maybe someone gave it to him. Maybe someone in the church gave it to him. Uh, they bought a different radio and, or, you know, it was, he probably got it around uh, the war, wartime. Someone in the uh, congregation that he had or someone that he knew in the church uh, community decided that he should have a radio to keep up with the war news you know that's the way I think will happen and then of course right after the war probably in the 50s uh, this thing wound up never being played again boy she's looking real nice ain't she look at that wood grain coming here this has a wood grain going this way in the front vertically and then everything else up here is going uh, horizontally boy she's looking really nice I'm going to wipe it down now with a damp cloth. Just a damp cloth, not a wet cloth. we got to get some of that Gojo off of there or get it all off there. And then we'll take a look at it and see what she looks like. So we'll stand it up. All right, here we got our damp cloth here. Now remember, this is a damp cloth wipe down. It doesn't, you don't want it to be totally soaking wet. It could lift some of the veneer. You don't want that to happen. You just want to kind of have something squeeze out a lot of water. You know, wet the entire cloth, of course. But then squeeze out as much water as you can. You're out here to just wipe off the Gojo. Okay, the Gojo's already done the work. All right, get that thing wiped down real good. See, probably still getting stuff off of it. We are. See, see the brown tint there? We're still getting stuff off of it. Might have to go over it again with some Gojo. We'll see, and be careful. You don't want any of the veneer to catch on the cloth of the rag, see? So you don't want to put a pound, you know, a, a pound per square inch of pressure on this thing. You don't want that. You want to just kind of lightly wipe it down. And it'll, it'll, uh, the water will soon evaporate, okay? Let's stand it up now see what she looks like. This is the other side. This is pretty much what it looked like when we started. 
And now here's what the other side looks like now that we've given it a good work over. Doesn't that look a whole lot different? Look at that. This cabinet will not need refinishing. The little dings and stuff like that will all disappear when I put that Howard's Restore finish on it, okay? Now, of course, the top's a totally different story. Look at that mess. Ooh, boy. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with that. That's uh, There's paint speckles and all kinds of stuff on there. A lot of water. Water damage to the finish. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to strip that baby down. But, that's, that's one side pretty much done. I'll give it another... I'll give it another run over with the uh, the Gojo. Then we'll take the speaker cloth out and finish up the rest of the cabinet with, with the stuff. See how it looks. Before removing your speaker and the backing board for your speaker, it's probably always a good idea to go ahead and mark it with pencil. Just like that, all the way around it, so you know how to put it back exactly the way it was before, okay? Don't try to rely on memory because sometimes I've seen people staple these things in and when they get them in, they aren't back the way they were originally and they look really weird. So give yourself a little trace there, kind of help out. It's the kind of thing that won't be seen anyway, okay? Now this speaker uh, support appears only to be uh, stapled in two places, right here. And right here. Now normally they're stapled at the bottom, they're stapled at the sides, and sometimes even at the top. And these cardboard backings really are brittle over the years. They really get, you know, just the slightest touch and they begin to flake apart. And people will really destroy them sometimes, and you know, not intentionally. They just try to get this the thing out, uh, get the speakers out, and in the process they just tear up the whole thing. Well, let me show you a quick and easy way to get them out. It's called diagonal cutters. Now you can do it two ways. You can snip off each side of the staple, like so, so the two little stubs are down in there, and then the whole thing will lift out, and then once you get it out, you can go ahead and pull the stubs out. That's one way of doing it. And sometimes the staples are down deep into the cardboard, and you know, that, that's about the only way you can really do it. Another way is to go ahead and just get a hold of it. If it's, if, if it's up high enough, you can catch it on your fingernail, which I can right here. Just take the old dikes, just kind of put them horizontally there, Get a hold of it with the dike. You don't want to cut through it. You just want to pull it. See? The whole thing comes right out. That's all it takes. All right? Now, normally, I hold the backing down while I'm pulling with the dikes, but I can't do that since I only have one hand right now. One more thing on this radio. It has two sets of nuts and washers. Uh, you have the inside. This is the outside set that holds the speaker on, the speaker uh, basket itself. And the inside set has a large washer and a nut that holds the speaker backing to the wood. So you have to take it all off. Take it off. Take it all off. And then we'll remove these four screws. And the whole thing should just lift right out. Hopefully, unless, you know, crud. And it seems to be fairly loose, so I shouldn't have any trouble. And then once you get it out, of course, you store it somewhere where it is safe. It does not get wet. It does not warp. Keep it flat. Okay? Flat, flat, flat. All these uh, screws and nuts and bolts and whatever, all this crap's going to go in here. It's pretty rusty. It needs to be worked over a bit with navel jelly. So while I'm working on the cabinet and doing other things the rest of the day, I think we'll just go ahead and kind of cover this stuff with navel jelly like so. Just kind of stir it all around, mix it in. Make sure you get everything coated real good. Like so. Just let it soak. It'll soak all day long. I don't care. It won't hurt it any. There's nothing aluminum in there. And even if there was, I'd be able to replace it if it went bad. No biggie. We do not worry about anything like that. We do not worry about such things. We just go ahead and get things clean. All right. Now, where's the top? I'm just going to go ahead and put the old top on there. And every once in a while, I'll come over and I'll just give it a little shake like that. Okay? That's all you got to do. Easy stuff. Well, as you can see, the old, the old speaker has really discolored over the years. The original color was probably a darker, almost a kind of, almost a brownish, coppery color. And uh, over the years, the light has really faded it out. It's just just sunlight and light in general. I think. 
<laughs> it's hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure the dark area was the original color. Maybe we can come up with something that looks close to that. I don't know. I have a, a spray paint that I bought that might get close to the dark color. We'll have to wait and see. If not, I might just, just paint the whole thing gold. This is, this is what it looked like anyway after the light bleached it all out. I don't know. I'm going to have to give this some thought. We have another issue that always pops up with these old radio cabinets, and that's the paperwork on the inside. And as you can see, this stuff is really brittle. It's, it's held in with four staples. One in each corner, the top is all missing. Obviously, now I could go ahead and just, you know, paint a bunch of glue over the top of that and everything. But I think what I'm going to do, normally I don't worry about this sort of thing. I'm not too... Uh, not too keen on it, you know, but I think what I'm going to do with this one is go ahead and remove the staples as quickly and as best I can. I'm going to scan it on my printer and then uh, go ahead and cut it out and, and re-stick it back on after the cabinet's all done. Now there's another one over here that's just so dark, it's just, it's just a waste of time to even mess with it. It's just flaking apart. There's no way I could get it off anyway. So, you know, why, why worry about it? Just take it off there and get rid of it. It's just can't read it, can't see it, it's just a pain in the butt. I want to get behind it and get some protection on that wood anyway. So let's see what we can do with this one. This did, it may wind up being destroyed in the process of getting it off, and I'm not sure what good it's going to do even after I get it back on there. Now this is one of those deals where I was talking to you earlier where you cut one side of the, uh, cut one side of the uh, staple, and then bend it straight up, okay? And the other side up here, try to get it to corner, then bend it straight up, like so, it's kind of delicate work. Now once you get it bent straight up, it should just lift right off. Just, oh my goodness, what we got over here, oh, no, this, this one's not, this one's going to be a little bit stubborn. Let me go ahead, and we, there we go, we got her, okay. Well, that's what we've got. I'm not even sure it's worth saving. I don't know. One more thing. Uh, after you've cut those staples and you've removed your paper or whatever it is you removed, go over your hand. You've got to pull those stubs of those staples out of there. Otherwise, when you start wiping, that thing will tear your hand up. You'll be bleeding all over the place. Kind of go over it lightly with your hand. Very lightly, very lightly. Feeling around till you find where the stubs are. There's one right there. I gotta get that thing out of there, man. That thing will tear my finger up something fierce. Where'd she go? She's here somewhere. She's here somewhere. There she is right there. Boy, I gotta get that out of there. That's the way I get them out. I just use a little pair of, of dikes again. You just lay it flat against the cabinet and then just kind of wedge it out like that. Boy, I'll tell you, these things will tear your hands up. When you're in there washing with a rag, it'll go right through the rag and just, just rip your skin apart. She's getting there. It's a slow process. You know, this is just the first wipe down. Now, one thing I want to stress again to you is you don't want to be catching any of this veneer on your cleaning rag. You catch the veneer. Some place, sometimes you have a radio, it looks fine, but there's one little area here that you don't see that's lifted up. You catch it on the rag, you go, and next thing you know, it's, it's lifted completely off, and you're just like, oh, I don't believe it, you know. So, lightly clean and go with the grain now this is the on this side over here the grain goes this way and on the front you can see the grain goes this way okay there's a, just an area about this wide right here where the grain goes vertical so stay with the grain keep your eye on the grain you know cleaning a cabinet working a cabinet is just as meticulous and you have to do just as much attention to detail as you do on your chassis. It's just another section of the radio, okay? Don't just do your chassis, make it look real good, and then just, you know, it's just sort of, you know, well, it's just a cabinet, you know, I'll just strip it down, or I'll do this, or I'll do that. You know, take your time, you know, make it look good, just like the old chassis. And then give yourself, give it a nice wipe down this way in the front, see, vertical, because that's the way that the wood grain goes. Now, we're still cleaning with the old Gojo. All right? All right, see, now that's the first wipe down, and as you can see, that rag is just a mess. Look at there. Years and years of grime. All right, now we'll go ahead and wipe it all down with a damp cloth, and then we'll go over it one more time with the Gojo. 
Never forget the back edges of your radio. You know, too many times, I cannot tell you how many times, I've seen really nice finishes applied to a radio. They spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, and then they did not even come near the back edges. Yeah, and they just look terrible. This is, this is one guy on eBay that sells some very nice looking radios. The finish looks really good, but he always seems to forget the back edges. And when you turn the radio around and look at it, uh, it just looks horrible. It just ruins everything. You, you got to get it all, guys. You got to get it all. There's no rush to any of this stuff. We take our time. We do it right the first time. You know, there's an old saying. If, you know, I say, well, I didn't have time to do it. Well, if you don't have time to do it right the first time, where are you going to get time to do it the second? Okay? Take your time. This is just like a chassis. I've got to do the bottom of this thing. We've got to clean the inside. Get all that crap off there. Look at the stuff coming off there. It's even worse than on the sides. The inside of the cabinet, again, you use, like I said, the damp rag, only this time you make it a little bit wetter. Don't just use damp because this thing is really dirty and be careful in here because there's usually a lot of splinters. Uh, sometimes you have to go through the inside and clean it two, three times, you know. But there's all kinds of dirt and grime and crap in these things. I've already vacuumed it out and, and gave it a dry wipe when, I, when the, I first opened up the box that the radio was in that was shipped to uh, the box that was, you know, Martin shipped it in. Just take your time. Just to, You may have to rinse out your rag, you know, two, three times. As you can see, it's already getting all kinds of mangy, dirty and everything. Anyway, just do your best, just do your best, but try to make the inside of the cabinet look nice and clean, okay? I just finished wiping down the bottom of the cabinet, and now it's time to take off these old legs. Now, these old legs had felt in them in the center, and over the years, the felt has all disappeared, and it, it, you put that on your table, and it'll just scratch up everything. You know, I always get rid of these things. This particular type, I've never seen this kind before. This, this particular type has an actual nail down through the center. Look at that, they put a nail down through the middle. That's normally not been the case. That Normally the, the, uh, the nail portion is part of the leg itself. See, they just put a little old, little old nail down there. But of course, this is a 1937 radio. See, that's what would be tearing up your tabletops or whatever. Better get that off the carport floor here. It'll be tearing up Wifey's tire on her van. <laughs> Now here's something interesting that I just discovered. I, uh, in the process of cleaning, I discovered that there was a a, a bushing, a thick old, and it's all hard now. Eh, it's a little bit flexible, but not very much. It was up in this hole here, and it apparently had a screw and a flat washer. They went on up through into the bottom of the chassis and held the rear of the chassis down. And that's kind of cool. I did. I've never seen one of those. I mean, I've seen this hole before. But I have never seen one that actually had a cushion in it. Well, now we learned something here today. See? We all learned together. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. That's really, uh... I may be able to come up with a washer made out of something. I may have to get a hold of renovated radios and ask him if he's got anything that'll work. It's possible that one of the inside mounting rubber washers that, the, uh, that mounts the chassis to the cabinet might work let me see how big this is yeah one that may work I may need to get one more of those things it's time for round two okay let's get rid of this old nasty one stick it over there and let's let's start again with this nice clean one let's see how dirty we can get it on round two well <laughs> as you can see as you can see it's still pretty dirty that's just this one side again Brand new rag, more Gojo, and it's still pretty dirty. So, you know, we're probably going to have to go over this thing a third time. I'll tell you what, in the meantime, let's go ahead and let's shake our screws around in the old navel jelly. Anyway, well, let's just keep at it is all we can do is just keep at it. All right, as you can see, the first rag on the right, the second rag on the left, we've made, you know, vast improvements here. One more wipe down. Well, that's it. After the third time of going over it, it came out pretty darn good. All you see right there is a, a little bit of finish that came off. You know, the, uh, the lacquer toned finish 
I'm not sure exactly how they did it. I've read all kinds of ways that they did it, but frankly, I think they took some stain, threw it in some lacquer, and sprayed. But anyway, there's no dirt, no grime, no crap, just a little bit of finish. So we'll consider that clean. Uh, you know, for a few minutes there, I thought maybe we could salvage this top, but it's just not going to happen. You know, it's just, it's going to have to be stripped down. <clears throat> Even Howard's Restore finish couldn't do much with that. There's no finish there at all. So, you know, we got to kind of help it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and tape it all off, all the way around with some paper. Then we're going to see if we can't clean up that top a little bit with some lacquer thinner. Alright, the old rain has finally started. We're supposed to get anywhere from one to four inches. We dodged the first bullet that went through, the first weather bullet. It, uh, it just sort of skirted the edge of the, of the county. We got a little bit of rain, just barely wet the grass, but now I think we're fixing to get a good blow here. In the meanwhile, I'll go ahead and stay under the carport where it's dry, and we'll go ahead and put a little bit of lacquer thinner. You've seen me do this a million times. We'll put a little bit of lacquer thinner up here on this cabinet top and see if we can't loosen up some of this stuff. Hopefully it'll uh, loosen it. I like to use these foam rubber brushes because they, you know, they just sort of get thrown away easy. I can buy a whole bag of them for practically nothing. So let's see how that works first and see if I can't get something down to the wood here. I don't know. We'll see. Well, there it is. That's about as clean as I can get it. There's a lot of stains on it. This one stain in particular just won't come out. But you know, that stain should not come out. That's, that's an important stain. And I know how it got there. Yes, I do. One day, uh, an alcoholic came to see the Reverend Martin Luther Banks Jr. He was in desperate need. He knew he was dying, and he needed to get off the alcohol. He needed, he needed a man to pray with him to get off of it. And the Martin Reverend Luther Banks Jr., and his wife rushed to his aid, his wife being Maud, of course. And, and the reverend took the bottle of whiskey from the man's hand and he set it on top of the radio real quick and attended to the man's spiritual needs. And of course, when he set it on top of the radio, the whiskey bottle fell over and some of it poured out on top of the radio cabinet. And before the reverend could get back to clean it up, you know, he or his wife Maud, it had soaked into the wood. But the man, when the reverend got done, Never again took an alcoholic drink for the rest of his life. Now, I challenge anyone to prove me wrong. There's not a whole lot more we can really do on this radio uh, cabinet today. Uh, we can put a little bit of stain on it. Hopefully, it'll darken up enough to sort of match the rest of the cabinet. Now, I'm using gun stock, of course. It kind of... Darkens up the wood a little bit. It won't darken it up a whole lot, but I'm trying to get it to come up with some kind of a... This, this is not going to match. I'm going to have to put a little walnut on top of it probably when I'm done and just kind of do the best I can. You know, it's going to be a one, two, three, four step kind of procedure. Let it soak in, add a little more, add a little more, and darken it up, darken it up. See, see if we can come close to what, you know, what we had before. With the cabinet still wet, I haven't wiped it down. Uh, I have some dark walnut here and the brush still wet. I'm going to go ahead and just dip a little bit of a dark walnut in there. Kind of mix that right in with that gun stock. It's been setting for about, oh, maybe 20 minutes now, just sitting there soaking away. And I'll tell you what, you know, the matching color, that's pretty darn close. If I could just get it to dry like that, it'd be great. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not going to happen when I wipe it off. As expected, this old video is running pretty long, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off here. You know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. At first, when you look at these cabinets, you say, well, that ought to be quick and easy, you know. But it never is. You know, the inside of the cabinet still needs to be sealed with sealer. I still have to tape you know the top off and put some darker toner here it won't be that really really dark walnut it'll be darker but not really really not really almost black I don't think I may I may change my mind later we have to darken this up just a little bit on top here now that we've got it stained because there's not quite an exact match between here and here it looks pretty close but when you know in 
in the camera it looks pretty close but when you get up close and eyeball it you can see there's there's quite a bit of difference but there, you know there will be a difference when I get done unless I was to tone the entire cabinet which I'm not going to do anyway we have a lot of work to do as you can see right here it needs to be taken care of that's from you know the finger and the thumbnail when you turn your your dials like that somebody had long thumbnails <laughs> and uh, it just wore the, the the finish right off we'll have felt pads behind that after we we're going to stain it in and you know bring back some of the dark color but you know you'll be able to see that battle scar and these two right here you know all caused by martin's uh grandpa and his grandma probably and maybe someone who might have owned it before them kind of cool actually i think it looks neat it shows human use humans did that that's cool anyway we'll go ahead and uh eventually put some uh howard's restore finish on it make it look good and uh we're also going to i took this uh scutcheon plate the backing plate for the dial out of there it's got some rust and crap on it we gotta get rid of that rust i, I can't live with that it's gonna you know i don't want it to get worse and worse we need to de-rust it and get some clear coat on it even though it's never seen it doesn't matter you know you don't want that don't be cutting any corners now you know what i mean anyway part two will be next when we continue work on this thing so until then this is john that radio sounds great right now i'm transmitting there's something missing here though i can't put my finger on it I'm transmitting from a, an oldies but goodies site through my transmitter here. I wish I could figure out what's missing. What is that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I know what it is. There's no hum. There's no hum. You know, Radio Al and Art Hollingsworth, they, they've got those humming transmitters. I do not. I have a nice homemade Quaker Oat Box transmitter with no hum. <laughs>